Hey friends, in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the top five PC building tips that have saved my butt either time or from destroying my computer over the past few years that I've been building a PC that you might not know. So let's go ahead and start at the start, talking about the start button. I'm sorry for that dad joke, but you're welcome. Let's go ahead and just talk about the start button for a second, because typically with these things, you have to stick them in the front panel connectors on your motherboard. And presumably you either did that ahead of time, which leads to like cables being wonky as you're trying to put the motherboard in, or you do it after the motherboard's already installed. So you have a finite amount of space to actually get it in there. My giant sausage fingers have typically always really struggled with this until I learned this nifty trick that this is reversible. It doesn't matter which direction you put it in because you're just bridging two of the connectors. That's it. So you can stick it in the way that it's supposed to, you can stick it in upside down, and it will still power on your PC when you press the button. This also applies to the reset switch. All you need to do is take the connector and jam it on in there. That's it. It's easy. You don't have to pay attention to orientation. Just make sure you're bridging the correct two pins and that's it. So don't worry about like if the cable is trying to flip back over as you're trying to get it in, just do it in the easiest way possible. However, also as it's kind of like a little bonus tip add on to this, you might already know this one, but for bridging those two connectors, you can just use something simple like a screwdriver. Anything metal to bridge those two pins will get your PC to turn on. That's one of the things that I could do with my open air chassis because I could just like stab it with the screwdriver, just poke it. Thankfully it has a button where I can press it and I didn't have to wire this button. But if you do have to wire your start button, doesn't matter which way it goes in. Now let's power up the tips with some tips on the power supply. I'm sorry, I'm not in a good place as you can tell by my dad jokes today, but let's go ahead and talk about these power supply cables because there's a couple nifty things that you could possibly do, especially if you're on a budget. Let's say you get a hand-me-down processor, motherboard, all of that, or a hand-me-down graphics card, and you don't wanna update or don't have the money to update your power supply and the rest of your system. Well, this can come in handy because you typically see that graphics cards come with either eight pin or six pin PCI Express power connectors. Fun little fact, you don't need those those little extra two connectors. If all your power supply has is a six pin connector and your GPU takes eight, well, the extra two pins are just ground, but they are necessary to supply extra power. However, if your GPU's power consumption is less than the total rated output of the six pin PCI Express connector, you're actually not really risking a whole heck of a lot by skipping out on those extra two. So if you only have a six pin, you can kind of just put it in the eight pin and things might be fine as long as power draws in spec. This also applies to the the CPU connectors. You have either four or eight pin CPU connectors on your motherboards, and you also would see that with the power supply connector that comes with it. This comes with a little extra thing. If you only have an eight pin power connector, you can just jam that right into the four pin power connector and the other four will just hang off. You'll be totally okay with that. However, it also applies reverse. You can plug the four pin into the eight pin and it will still work. However, the issue is again, power draw. A four pin CPU connector is rated to draw 155 watts. An eight pin is rated to draw 235 watts, but as long as your CPU is under that spec of 155 watts, you can forego making sure that you have the proper connector at the time. I've done this so much. I've done things even worse than this. I've had Molex adapters to SATA adapters onto a PCI Express adapter, and I'm pretty sure it was a fire hazard. This is a little less risky just because everything's kind of standardized with adapters. You're getting into weird wiring and very cheap components. With power supply cables, they're typically rated the way that they're supposed to be, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Four pin can go into eight pin, eight pin can go into four pin, and you don't necessarily need to have the extra two pins on your six pin graphics card, so that's helpful. But before we move on to the next third tip, we actually have a bonus tip from our friend over at Zach's Tech Turf. He's gonna walk you through something right now. Hey friends, one bonus tip that I have for you that you may not know about or you may just not be fully up to speed on is that not all M.2 drives and M.2 slots are the same. It's actually kind of complex, but I'm gonna make it super simple for you. This motherboard here is a great example as initially you may see that there's three M.2 slots, but actually all three of these are different in some way or another. Here's where you need to know that there's different sizes of M.2 drives and not all of them are compatible with each other. If you look on this motherboard here, you would have seen on the website that there is indeed three three M.2 slots, but if you look closely at this bottom M.2 slot, it's actually way shorter and it wouldn't fit the normal 
normal SSD size of 2280. This 2280 number means that the drive is 22 millimeters wide and 80 millimeters long. This is super important because you won't be able to throw in the longer 2280 SSD drives in a much shorter slot on your motherboard that's intended for those smaller 2230 Wi-Fi chips. Another difference in these slots and drives is the speed differences and you need to make sure that you're not wasting money and causing a bottleneck somewhere. Currently the fastest consumer drives are the Gen 4 NVMe drives that you can find on X570 motherboards while paired with Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, but the much more popular options right now are the Gen 3 SATA and NVMe SSDs. Here's where you need to know that the interfaces for these SSDs may not be the superior NVMe technology and instead it could be the older and slower SATA. SATA M.2 drives are not nearly as fast as their NVMe counterparts and they're actually limited to that same 550 to 600 megabyte per second read and write limits that normal 2.5 inch SATA SSDs are as well. In order for you to fully take advantage of one of these faster NVMe drives, your motherboard will need to have a Gen 3 X4 slot. That X4 indicates four PCIe lanes as opposed to X2, which only means two lanes. If we take a quick peek on Amazon, you can see that these NVMe drives indicate if they're X2 or X4, and you're gonna end up paying more for these faster X4 drives typically. Just like sizing, this is also super important because if your motherboard or especially laptops only have an M.2 X2 slot, then you don't wanna go out there and waste money on an X4 drive because you will be bottlenecked with those lower speeds. Even worse than bottlenecking is if there's zero compatibility at all. Some motherboard M.2 slots will only support NVMe drives and not SATA drives, so if you have one of those and then end up buying an M.2 SATA drive, your motherboard actually won't recognize the drive at all. The biggest tip that I have for you is before you start buying and building, make sure you really take a look at that motherboard spec sheet and find out exactly what speed and size M.2 drives it'll take. Don't just look at how many M.2 slots it has. Thanks, Zach. Let's go ahead, talk about tip number three from your boy, because Zach's tip is a bonus tip. You guys are getting extra tips today. I'm sure that's what you wanted. You came here for tip, just the tip. Yo. We're still gonna stay on the topic of power supplies. However, this one can save your bacon in case you have an extra power supply lying around, or let's say you have a couple hand-me-down cables coming in and out with modular power supplies. The cables, while they might fit into multiple different power supplies, the, this little end that connects into the power supply, while they might fit in different power supplies, they are not hot swappable. They are not supposed to be swapped in between because while the connector might be the same, the actual pin out, the voltages, everything that's going on in the cable is typically different from manufacturer to manufacturer. So if you have a cable from let's say your NZXT power supply and you find that it fits into your Corsair power supply and your Corsair power supply doesn't have the cable you need so you have to grab it from the other power supply, don't do it. Just, just don't, you're gonna have a bad time. This also typically applies within manufacturers' ranges. A lower end Corsair power supply isn't necessarily pin compatible with the highest end Corsair, even if it might physically slot in. Just because the tip fits in the slot doesn't mean it needs to stay in the slot. Okay, friends, practice safe tipping. Number four, let's go ahead and talk about motherboards for a second. This is a nifty little tip that'll get you through uh, in case you're trying to make sure that you have the correct slot for your graphics cards because PCI Express slots on motherboards are rated in different lanes. You typically find them in one lane, four lane, eight lane, or 16 lane. And usually you wanna make sure that your graphics card or whatever your primary PCI Express device is, is on the 16 lane lane PCI Express slot so that you get the full bandwidth. That's what the lanes apply to is how much bandwidth are you getting of the PCI Express throughput. So in order to make sure that happens, one, you could look at the manual, but who wants to do that? You already threw it away. You're a professional computer builder, right? So the easiest way to determine how many lanes each PCI Express slot has to make sure you know where your graphics card should go is just look at the back of the motherboard because you can see if the pins on the back of the motherboard extend the full length of the slot, it's a 16 lane slot. However, if it only extends half, it's an eight lane slot. If it only extends a quarter, it's a four lane slot, which is helpful because even though the entire slot looks the same on the front end of the motherboard, it might not necessarily have the full bandwidth that you might need going forward, which isn't typically an issue for a lot of graphics cards, but it can be with other devices that you're using. However, caveat to this, with some motherboards, if you put a card in the first slot and then you put something else in the second slot, while the first slot might be a 16 lane slot and the second lane is uh, the second slot is an eight lane slot, they both will run at eight lanes each with just motherboard weirdness, which you know you need to dig out the manual that you threw out for the motherboard, which you know you could just download online because you threw it away. So there you go. I said slot a lot there, that was weird. Then let's go into the last tip, number five. This is my favorite PC building tip. This is the one that has saved the most time out of everything that I've done. I love it so much. 
Once I realized this, I had a much easier time building computers, and that's with the RAM, okay? When you're trying to make sure that your RAM goes incorrectly into your motherboard, this nifty little tip will save you all of the time you need. You don't need to test fit it. Oh, it doesn't fit this way, I have to rotate it. No, sticker on the RAM stick faces in towards the CPU. I have not found a single motherboard or single stick of RAM that has not adhered to this policy. If it's a setup of like a normal motherboard, you have the sticker facing in left towards the CPU. However, on higher end boards that I've used, X299, X399, it still also applies because they're typically flipped. I'm sure there are some motherboards where this doesn't apply, but I can tell you after years of building PCs that those would be outlier cases. So with X299, you have the CPU in the middle, the right set of RAM sticks. Well, the sticker is going to face towards the left, so it's going to be like this. But then on the other side, the sticker is going to face in towards the right because they're rotated upside down. And then bam, all of the sticks fit. You don't have to worry about sizing things, not sizing things properly, accidentally putting too much force and then cracking the PCB like maybe I did one time, but I don't want to admit to here on camera. That would be, that would be bad. That would be bad if you broke RAM, okay, from stepping on it because you left it on the floor. That would also be a very bad thing. Tech tip number six, bonus for you. Don't leave your PC parts on the floor. Don't install a PC in carpet either, because if you lose a screw, it's just gonna go all over the place. You're not gonna ever be able to find that again. You're gonna have to vacuum it up and then dig through the dust thing on your vacuum. That's not gonna be a good time. Anyways, that's gonna be the end of my five PC building tips that you might not have known about. And also big thanks again to Zach Stechter for submitting his bonus tip for us here today. Let us know if any of these tips helped you with building your computer. Are there any that you didn't know? Let us know down below in the comments if we surprised you with any. I know I told Reese all of these and he, he even though he's built PCs, was bamboozled by the fact that these are real things. So you're welcome. Also, if you have a favorite PC building tip that we didn't cover here that makes you excited and maybe most other people don't know it, feel free to leave it down below in the comments to help other PC builders. That's gonna be it. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on our tech-related content. You better stop! Bye. <laughs> it's gonna get edited out, Catelyn. No, who's gonna edit it out? Me. Yeah, that's... But I still gotta listen to it. Ex you're not supposed to be using your ears.